welcome you all for the leadership program organized by Ministry of Education Innovation Cell jointly with AICT and CBSC. Myself, Dr. Ilangovan Kariyapan, Assistant Innovation Director, Ministry of Education Innovation Cell. Today we have with us Mr. Esraj Bharatwaj, an young entrepreneur who started his company when he was in the 8th grade of his school. I welcome you Mr. Esraj for this leadership program. Thank you. So before we start the program, a brief profile about our expert today. Ms. Estra is a co-founder of Photonic India and IDEX Solution, a group of companies based in India, UAE and Hong Kong. He owns 36 research projects and 15 publications to his credit. He has been honored with the prestigious Karma Veera Chakra Award 2016 and he is named among the top 10 young entrepreneurs of 2016 across the globe by Success Magazine. He was also the proud nominee of Padma Shri in 2018 one of the highest civilian award in India. So he is in Forbes list under 30 and youngest only Indian in Godfellow in University of California, Berkeley. With this small brief, I once again welcome our chief guest and expert for the program today. So yes, we had a lot of questions raised and have been asked by the teachers and students across the country. We have shortlisted few and I will be on behalf of the teachers and students I will be asking you, okay. so which uh, is be a learning for the students with, from the successful entrepreneur. Right. So the first uh, question which I have today is, please, please share your journey as an entrepreneur and what motivated or inspired you to become an entrepreneur. Okay. So I think uh, first of all, thank you so much uh, Dr. Ellen for having me here, uh, it, it feels great to be always at the AICT headquarters. Uh, I think when we talk about my entrepreneur journey, uh, to be honest with you, maximum of it, uh, it really relies and uh, the credit of it goes to my twin brother, Yogaj, who is five minutes elder to me and of course my boss who signs my paycheck. Uh, so my brother and me, we were I think around uh, 12 years old when yeah. we used to play cricket and uh, we of course we wanted to be cricketers and uh, I was slightly better than you while okay. playing that. But uh, coming from a, a family which is a traditional Indian middle class family and my parents who had an experience of being in sports, especially my dad, he was a national gold medalist in swimming. They knew hardship into sports and end of the day, every parent in India, they are so caring towards their children that they want their children to do something which gives them stability in the life, you know, and mm -hmm. that's what our parents wanted us to do. And that was absolutely right, I mean, because they were thinking totally good for us. So we had to leave cricket at that point and uh, we were just like normal kids, we would go to school in the morning, okay. come back, watch a few cartoon shows like Doraemon, Jetsons in the afternoon, have tuitions at home and that's all we were doing. Uh, at the same time, my brother Yub, he got, was really, you know, I, I would say was hands on onto physics. So he wanted to study particle physics, wanted to understand space and slow, slowly and steadily he actually wrote me in. Uh, I don't know how much of the audience is from Delhi, but every Sunday in Delhi, there is a book market that takes place at Darya Ganj, okay. wherein you can actually go and buy all these uh, inter international journals, all these expensive books at per kilogram basis. These are basically second hand books. Mm -hmm. And my dad especially used to take us there every week, wherein we would go and we would, you know, buy a bunch of books and we started reading different journals, science fictions. Uh, if I would say that when, while being in class 4th and grade 5, we were actually studying concepts like quantum mechanics, you know, particle physics and we wanted to get into into more of that. So I would say that was an initial phase mm -hmm. and uh, the reason why I said I, we did that is because you need motivation, you need yes. hunger. Yes. If I am not hungry, I am not going to eat something. If I am not thirsty, I will not have water. But when you have hunger and we had hunger at that time because we saw that we left cricket because uh, we wanted economic stability in the family. Okay. So if that uh, financial conditions would have been so upright, mm. right, would have been, I mean, we have, we have been really fortunate. But if we would have been even more fortunate, then I would not have been leaving cricket aside. Okay. So we said that, okay, now what we need to do is that the goal of our life is to remove this, this block that we have. Mm. And we started working towards it. Mm. And uh, to be honest with you, when we started, we had no clue that okay. I land up here okay. talking to you. 
Yes. But mm-hmm. I think it's just that you have to be determined. Mm-hmm. You have to be really persistent. That's yes. what an entrepreneur's mind is. Mm-hmm. You have to be 24/7. Mm-hmm. If you're looking for a comfort, uh, then do a nine to five. Yes. But don't don't get into business because okay. business is 24 hours. Nothing is wrong. Everything yes. is absolutely right. But it is about what excites you and what drives you yeah. and what your hunger is. So yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, it was uh, really amazing to hear that today because without any persistent or hard work, we don't get anything. You're right. So as I said, as an entrepreneur, twenty-four bar seven, we can see exactly that it be a, uh, it's a good uh, learning for us also. Yes. So, uh, what were the challenges that you faced during your entrepreneur journey so far? Oh, challenges <laughs> have been many. I mean, I faced. I just faced a challenge today morning while coming up. Okay. And I think uh, life in uh, of an entrepreneur is just full of challenges. Okay. But even the same thing, what gives us a kick? For example, if I'm not facing challenges, that doesn't. That is not really giving me a kick mm. to be an entrepreneur. Yes. I want to be an entrepreneur because I like to solve challenges. So. but naming a few interesting ones which i think the audience would also love to know mm-hmm. is that uh, when we both started researching and we were actually reading concepts like uh, you know particle physics quantum mechanics at an early stage there was a serious issue because we at that time did not have programs like these mm-hmm. which could help a independent young researcher without having any professional degree to do intense research in any particular sector yes um uh, So my brother Yuvraj again. The credit goes to him. He came up with this idea. Okay, what we will do is that let's uh, Google the professors. So all these authors that are writing books and we reading those, we will lit- literally Google those professors, scholars, researchers. Take out their emails, their Skype IDs, their phone numbers, and we literally started spamming them. Okay. That, okay, this is where I come from. I yeah. don't have a finance to visit. Let's say University of Cambridge, but I just want your help and your guidance. into this particular concept where i'm stuck and i need your help okay uh slowly and steadily after 6 7 months when you do something constantly with lot of persistence uh a level a point comes when your level of doubts actually makes sense mm-hmm. and at that time we actually got in touch with very good people and they were ready to help us they were helping us they were clearing our doubts and um, that actually made us even stronger we did everything to clear our routes okay and we just were persistent to know the knowledge that we wanted to have yes so i think these are two interesting things i would say though in business it's daily life you you uh, you meet different kind of people so challenges are many but uh, it's on your persistence and it's on your ability mm-hmm. that you are just not uh, you don't have to dodge yes. to any problem just face it to your head and uh, smash it yeah that's how an entrepreneur works Yes, that's always the experience gives a lot of uh, learning to us. Yeah. And uh, starting from a cricketer, then you want uh, been interested in quantum care, and uh, you know, computing, then writing to a uh, different professor because usually always everyone has an hesitant to write to a seniors or you know, uh, scholars feel like they will get a reply or yeah. no. But still, you have you both had worked towards to make sure that you write a number of questions yeah. and you got and reply and. Uh, as we got your place doctor learn because i have two nieces at my house okay and uh, i mean in my time what really made me interested into sciences and and made me interested into solving challenges kind of a mindset was cartoon series okay for example uh, there is a cartoon series by the name of jetsons mm. uh, there is a cartoon series by the name of doraemon Okay. Those cartoon series, my mom had a very set routine for us that we would only watch it for certain time. Oh, yeah. But those really helped me that okay, why can't I build something like that? Okay. Why cannot I have why I work in a technology like that? Unfortunately, in these times, uh, social media has taken over lives mm. of younger generation. Yes. Yes. Which I see with my own eyes. Exactly. Now, a, a, a four-year-old child knows how to use Instagram. Yeah. How to how to see reels, mm. uh, but I think these this this shift is really n- not helping them to innovate. Mm. This will not help them to become an entrepreneur because it's our very short duration and everything becomes very you're fast. Right, you're right. I know they want everything result to be happen immediately. Exactly. But because that, of the shorts and those day. things. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. happen. I started business. Me and my brother. We started business at the age of fourteen, mm. and I'm twenty three years old right now. Oh, okay. Nine years, and still mm. I've not done anything. Yeah. So it's a it takes lot of effort. It takes mm. lot of persistence. But uh, you need to have a, a. There has to be a system in your mind mm. 
with that you are able to set your priorities that you are able to have patience mm. you know for example in in hindi there are two words buddhi and vivek mm. buddhi anybody can have i have buddhi right okay. and uh, yeah. you have buddhi anybody younger can have buddhi mm-hmm. but vivek comes with age yes experience you know yes. that for mm. that uh, you either have to rely upon your parents if you are starting young mm. you have to rely on your teachers you have yes. to rely on your mentors yeah so i think with this advent of the social media too much into the younger generation that uh, that essence of an indian culture is uh, is missing yes. wherein children listen to their parents they rely upon their advice mm-hmm. and i think that's what we need to really think as a very critical factor going yeah. forward for success of entrepreneurship as a culture in india yes see we always say mata pita guru which yes. we are supposed to follow exactly. the tradition and uh, do that but uh, you say like you have still lot to learn but if you say at 23 years of uh, age you have 9 years experience <laughs> so that's a, that's a big achievement and it's a, i can say a best practice which many should take into it yeah. as i said the social media have taken uh, many uh, kids away from their routines because they have been more uh, you know affected and they want immediately to happen everything that's one which we learn and you know we also seeing in day to day i think some changes will happen in the coming right. years that's what we are also looking yeah. for so next question is uh, we want to know how to overcome the influence of critical condition in ideation innovation entrepreneurship and startup your experience in that sell to you uh if lives are different hmm. for example if there are uh, hundreds and thousands of entrepreneurs yes. cultivating in streets of india right now yes and each and every body is life circumstances idea project that they are working on everything is different correct so giving it a a fine case study or converting it into a, a an algorithm mm. or or a statement for me would be would be would be bad okay but what i would say in in context for my journey which might help the audience to learn yes that whether if or if i if i apply to their lives and if if i really make some sense to them yeah would be that you have to be persistent Mm. dedication yes these are the few only key see for example if i have greatest of ideas and i am not dedicated i am not persistent enough to work on those yeah that idea is worth nothing yeah but if i have an idea which was already done before but i am persistent to do it in a new market mm. to do it in a larger way to do it in a better way it will succeed yes. are you getting me look at yes. startups like ola mm. uber was already existing in america yes yes but it was it was ola which actually said okay we will do this for india mm. it was not in it was not in a new innovation it was not it was something which was already done mm. but the scale they did it the way they did it yes. was exceptionally well so i think uh, being an entrepreneur is is couple of things first of the thing that goes with the ref- definition of entrepreneurship mm. is that solve a problem yes until unless you're solving a pain point you're solving a challenge mm. you're solving a a, a a a gap in the market you are not really impacting and mm. that's when you will not be able to be an entrepreneur you can't you can't make a business out of uh, uh, by by not solving anything yes. you getting me yes. the second reason uh, thing what i would say is being persistent and being dedicated mm. like you should know that you have to be 24/7 if yes. you want something if you want to advise just go for it i mean there are i know there are other a lot of kind of people but there are more good people in in in, in india unfortunately mm. we are in a land of uh, great businesses coming out yes, yes. just go out talk to people ask them and even if they are not replying just go to another one but you have to be really persistent got it while doing it yes. now third which is again the most important point and this is something i have realized myself mm. and fortunately i realized it very early age in my life okay is that always stick to your parents mm. yeah that's there are two people in this world your mom and your dad except these two people nobody else will give you a a true selfless advice yes that's only true. your parents your mm. mother and your father will give you an advice which might not benefit them which might harm them rather Yeah. but they will still give you an advice which is good but is good for you mm. one uh, unfortunate thing that we as a younger generation do is that we think that we are the smartest because yes. we have buddhi <laughs> yeah but unfortunately we don't have vivek mm. or fortunately 
Yeah. For that, we need to listen to our true mentors. That is our parents. So a lot of children come to me and tell me, okay, you know, I want to do this, mm. but my dad is not allowing me. <laughs> yeah. And I tell them, boss, do, then don't do it. Yes. <laughs> if your dad is not agreeing, yeah. then don't do it. Because I, I am sure that if your father is not convinced, no other investor would be interested to invest in your company. Yes. A good investor. Yeah. Because your our parents know us even before we know each other. Mm. They know us from the nine months before yes. we were born. Yes. yes. Right? Correct. So these are the two people who know our true capabilities yes. of what we can achieve yeah. and what we cannot achieve. Yeah, got it. And I, it happened with me. My father comes from a sports background. Mm. When we started business, initially, you know, I would go to him and me and my brother, we would tell him, okay, we're doing this. And he would tell us, okay, no, don't do it that way. It might affect you bad. And we would be like, no, but uh, I think we can. We, we failed miserably. Yeah, okay. So even now, when I take uh, any decision in my in, in business, even my brother, we love to consult it with my father because where can where in the world you will find such a fine, such an honest, a free of cost mentor. Yes, yes. Who is there to help you and support you throughout. Yes. Emotionally, financially, practically, theoretically, every way. Yes. So I think I would say, I would tell uh, uh, my friends to always stick to their parents. Be yeah. persistent, be dedicated mm. and end of the day solve a problem. Yes, fantastic. Because uh, we always take our parents as granted. Because yes. they have uh, easy do. access to us. And uh, no, they are, we see them 24 bar 7, so uh, we take them as a granted. It was well said, I'm, I appreciate or say I really overwhelmed with that. Because uh, our parents knows us and they are their, our well-wishers. Exactly. They will do for our uh, no, good. If my parents are telling me that, okay, don't do this. Mm. I think I should not be doing it. Yes, right. fantastic. Because, it's uh, an... They know my true capability of yes. what I can achieve and yes. what I cannot. Yes. So it's better I listen to them and I don't waste my time. Yes, it's an excellent uh, uh, example or say like a and mentor room we can we always search for mentors outside our house yes because they are, we don't take uh, we don't uh, know estimate their knowledge yeah. or we take them granted and we take them easy yeah so and we feel like you no know, we know better than them so you have very nicely highlighted that because it's a big lesson and uh, a story for every kids that you no know, we should listen to our parents and because they are the one who is going to if you are doing good or bad they are the one who is going to be traveling along with us exactly so coming along with this, I want also ask you, how important a role of mentor in an entrepreneur? Jardim. It is, it is really important. Okay. See, I was the, I am the luckiest one. Okay. And I'll tell you why. I got uh, parents at my house, which always supported me. Hmm. My, my dad and my mother, they would always, and uh, I think it was, it, it's in our blood, you know, uh, even when I go home today, okay. or even if I'm traveling, we have this habit that uh, I, I, me and my brother, we would speak to our parents at least for one hour okay. before we sleep. Excellent. And we okay. tell them what we did. Hmm. Okay, I went to AICT office today. Okay. I went for this meeting today. Okay. We would tell them the whole calendar that we did. Oh, it might not make any sense. Hmm. But the thing is, the reason we discuss and we talk is that sometimes they would say something which really impacts decisions that I'm going to make tomorrow. Hmm. Okay. So this is one practice that we we follow and that's why mentorship has been a very critical success factor and the reason I say I have been very lucky hmm. is because of my brother is like my father also okay <laughs> so he's also a mentor to you he in is a way. somebody that who has always taught me different skill sets okay how to negotiate okay how to speak okay how to sit okay. how to eat Okay. So I think this is something that I have been really fortunate that mm. I am the most pampered one in my house. <laughs> okay. That I have an elder brother okay. who is teaching me everything and who is taking care of uh, everything. Okay. The most difficult challenges in the business, he takes all of it on himself. Okay. And okay. gives me slight things to manage. So <laughs> that's why I am relaxed so. and I am having a good conversation with you. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, so I would say, but my, for my brother, uh, it's it's my parents. Okay. So. It having mentors, of course, is very important. But, but the main question is that how do you identify a mentor? Mm. How do you choose the right one? Yes. And I tell people that the first mentors that you have is is people in your house. That is your parents. If you stick to them, if you listen to them, the guidance and the the the, the knowledge that will come from their mind to your mind will help you choose the right people outside in the market. Exactly. 
So I cannot tell you. Okay. I cannot tell anybody. Okay. Choose Ooh. this guy and choose that guy. <laughs> yes. Okay. Because that would be stupid of mine. I mean, my life is totally different. The other yeah. person's life is totally different. Yes, I cannot yes. judge anybody. Yeah, yeah. You? But your parents can tell you the best way, the better than you. My parents can tell me better than than myself mm. that whether I should work with this person or not. Okay. So how uh, important the mentor, if you get a right set of mentor, how it will help you to take your business to next level? It does. See, I'll tell you, mm. running a business is mm. about how many good decisions you are able to make in a day. Okay. Mm. A, a great businessman is, is not somebody who is making good capital, no. Okay. A great businessman is somebody who is making good decisions in a day. Mm. And you have to be mentally stable, emotionally stable, physically stable, okay. spiritually stable to take the best decisions and take X amount of X number of best decisions in one day okay. so that you are able to be a successful person end of the day. But being a being a businessman, you don't map your success hmm. on a, on a balance sheet. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I have never seen an entrepreneur judging their business on a balance sheet. Okay. They judge their business according to the daily decisions that they're making. So every yeah, every day decision is being countable to what success exactly. of your. Exactly. Every day is, is accountable. If I take a call today, uh-huh. that might affect me three months down the line. Okay. So I should be having that kind of a visibility. So that decision kind of making way. is an important in an entrepreneurship exactly. role. That. Okay. So. If you want to be a great businessman, you have to make great decisions. Okay. Now to make great decisions, hmm. I already gave you three pieces of advice. Yes. Hmm. Which is solve a problem, persistence, dedication, and add stick to your parents okay. and mentors. Okay. Fantastic. If we do that, we make good decisions. And we okay. make good decisions, we become successful. Oh. As simple as that. Great. Nice to hear about it. So how to provide a strength to your idea in spite of limited resources? If we take, uh, we are talking to the school uh, teachers and the students mainly, we are just trying to promote them or create the culture of innovation in school. So with the limited resource, how do they give value addition to their ideas? Sir, two things on this thing. Hmm. I think if I am telling you that I have limited resources hmm. and I am not able to do this X thing, hmm. that means I am not hungry enough. Okay. <laughs> For example, if I am extremely hungry hmm. and if you give me one grain of rice, okay. You know, one grain of rice. I will not crib about it. Okay. I'll consume it. Mm. And rather than wasting my time in cribbing about it, I would go out in the market and look for another grain. Okay. So it can go to my stomach. So I think what we need to do as a generation and maybe as a community is to develop hunger. Mm. Yeah. The more we are, the, if if we are hungry, if if the if the future generation is hungry, they would thrive for it. They would work for it. Okay. And I'm not saying that it's it's just business that you should do. No, mm. I mean doing jobs, running a private sector and public sector jobs is also a very important aspect. But again, you have to be hungry in those also because then only you'll grow. Okay. I have a I have great people working in my team, and these people are not somebody who are just working uh, nine to five. No. Okay. They are all twenty four seven. Okay. They are not owners of business, but still, and they are growing. In a, in a very, in a very, you know, they're on a trajectory path of success because they 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 think themselves as responsible enough, hmm. hungry enough to be able to execute and solve bigger challenges. Great, I'm I'm able to see from the starting of our uh, interaction you have been saying about persistent, hungry, dedication, commitment, 24 hours, seven, uh, all those things is like you know best practice as a for an entrepreneur, yes. which you have been insisting about, we can understand the hungry in you, which makes you to know, yeah. be a successful entrepreneur so far and all the best for uh, your coming years also. Uh, next question is from my end is, how important a digital presence to the startup? Absolutely, it is very important in these days, uh, you know, digitization has really peeped into hmm. the population. If I talk about India as a market, which is like 130 billion people, Mm. Uh, you know, in, in our country, this is the world's biggest market we are sitting right now. Yes. The way our country is, you know, is is uh, is digitizing in terms of any sector that you talk about, that really makes the new ideas, new generation to also focus and target on the digital platforms because that's going to be very cost effective at the same time. Okay. And in effective in terms of the business outreach. If I give you an example, and you know, as we speak of uh, 
digitization. I was reading this article a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the real-time payments in uh, in uh, in the fintech mm. that uh, China is making right now, I think every day is close to eighteen thousand. Okay. Whereas if you talk about India, doing real-time payments in terms of fintech, uh, it, it goes up to forty-six thousand. So the way digitization has seeped into into Indian audience, for example, mm. if I go and buy anything in the market, I go to a barber shop, I go to Kirana Wala, mm. I go to a, a vegetable shop owner. Now they don't want cash; they yes. find having a Google yes. Pay or a yes. or a Paytm, yes. right? Exactly. So uh, I think now, if I am doing anything, if I am doing a company, if I am doing a startup, and if I am solving a challenge, the best way for me to market myself. Is to get into a digital space because that's when I will be, according to me, I, mm. we would be able to reach more people, okay. and thus it makes complete sense for the business oh. to 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 do that. It's fantastic, that. So, uh, uh, just want to know what are the important steps to be followed to become a successful entrepreneur? There are so many. You are talking about persistence, commitment, uh, dedication, twenty-four hours seven. Beyond that, uh, you say like no, these five steps or these ten steps. Which will make me to become an entrepreneur. Again, I would say the same thing, sir. Okay. One, I should be solving a challenge. Okay. A problem. Okay. That's the that's the first and the most uh, important thing hmm. if I want to be an entrepreneur. Second, I should be hungry enough. Okay. So okay. when when if I have less resources, I should not be craving. Rather, I should be thinking that I am the lucky one. Okay. Because then. God has given me an opportunity to be hungry enough yes. to be able to to execute and to solve that challenge. Because if I am full, why would I eat? Yes. Are you getting me? I'll only eat if I am hungry. Yes. So I should be hungry enough. Yes. Yes. And take it as a blessing. Don't yes. take it as uh, something that you have been unfortunate. No, you have been blessed if you are if you are hungry. Yes. Uh, then be persistent. Mm. Be dedicated. And last, but the most important thing. Stick to your parents. Okay. Listen and to their advice. If they tell you don't do it, don't do it. Yes. Doesn't and make sense. Great. So you have been very much insisting continuously on being following with parents. I'm absolutely. I think I this think that has yeah. been the most critical part. Yeah. In my journey. So I think as a school student uh, who are our audience uh, for this program today. I'm sure everyone has been, no. As I repeat, I'm um, just to repeat again. We take our parents granted. Yes, we do. So now we should take from this talk. We have been inspired and motivated that we should blindly believe our parents because our parents will give a right direction to us. So we should be a successful for our career yes. in future. That that's Absolutely. always good on that. So how important is networking in an entrepreneurship journey? Absolutely important. <laughs> I would say in a market like India, huh. networking is 40% or 30 to 40% of what you do. Okay. Because if you have a network, hmm. you have a market. Okay. If you have a network, you have access to capital. Hmm. If you have network, you have access to mentors. If you have network, you have access to more and more challenges. Hmm. You know, sometimes it's also difficult to think what problem am I going to solve. Yeah. But if you have a great network, then you know the challenges which are roaming around in the market right now, and you can prioritize whether I should be doing this or doing that. Okay. If you have network, you can create a great team. Mm-hmm. Now the question is how to create a network. Okay. Uh, the way you do it, so the way me and my brother did it, is that we never really stepped out to to make friends in our school life. You know, we would go to school, come back. You know, we would we would really we would be we would play, but we would only play with each other and just be at home and don't not go anywhere. No, I haven't been to birthday parties. I haven't okay. been to the friend parties or the tours and. Vacations ever in my life. Okay. And I'll not tell you. I'm. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's good. But mm. it's just that it was not into my uh, or my brother's priority list. Uh-huh. But what we did is that we started approaching people through social media, and I, that's how I took use of social media. Okay. I used Facebook. Okay. I used different social media. I used Gmail mm. to get in touch with smart people. Okay. If I am trying to do something good in my life, then I need to make sure that I sit. With the smartest of the crowd, mm. are you getting me? Yeah. For example, if I am sitting in a room where I am the one giving advice, mm. everybody else will gain out of it except me. Okay. 
Are you getting? Got it. So I should be sitting in a crowd mm. where everybody else is speaking, and, and I have list. to be quiet. Okay. Because then I have the most to gain. Okay, fantastic. It's lot to learn from this actually. Yes. Uh, so uh, now we always, you know, students of current generation has been more influenced or been uh, uh, more attracted by this IT profession, which so called white collar jobs. The Leadership talk of this kind uh, from Ministry of Education Innovation Cell jointly with AICT CBSE is to promote more entrepreneurs and invite and uh, you know entrepreneurs like you and motivate them to also step into this you know entrepreneurial journey. That was our uh, primary agenda of this program. If you, I ask you, what is the benefit of being an entrepreneur? So that that will motivate them, na, saying that okay. So I also want to step into it. Few thoughts from you. A lot of benefits. Okay. I mean, majority of benefits all of us already know about. Yeah. Uh, that uh, when you get to be your own boss and etc. Okay. But I'll tell you the important things mm. which give which keeps you going. Uh, the, so they, when you are into business and when you are an entrepreneur, a kick that you have that when you solve a problem, if I make five good decisions today, you will see a big smile on my face. End of the okay. day. Okay. I work for that smile. Excellent. I work for that satisfaction. Yes. Money is is a very, is, money is a byproduct, I'll tell you. Okay. You, I mean, an entrepreneur, I have seen great entrepreneurs in my life. I've got an opportunity to meet and interact with smart chaps. Mm. I have never seen anybody chasing money. Okay. Great. But what I have seen them is I have seen them chasing satisfaction end of the day that they speak, okay, I built this. Yes. I created this product. Okay. I created this community. Mm. I solved this challenge. Okay. And now people are doing it better. Okay. It's only because of me. Yes. That yes. sense of satisfaction supersedes with everything that comes with entrepreneurship. Yeah. Fantastic. Each and everything. Yes. So end of the day, why why am I an entrepreneur? Is because solving challenges gives me a, a reason to work hard and to live my life. Okay, that's good, really, and uh, no, a motivating factor because yeah. as a smile, our happiness, our satisfaction. We always say job satisfaction. You are satisfied by solving some problem which is benefiting huge uh, yeah, market and, and the society. You, running a business is is far 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 more difficult hmm. than getting into a, a white collar job, and okay. that's a fact. Yeah. And I can see it in any platform. It's because mm. that in business, you are not only solving a challenge, rather you have so many people around you, your vendors, your employees, yes. the people that, you know, the landlord that yes. whose office you have taken for rent. Correct. All these people's life depends on your decisions. Yes. Yeah. So it's yes. a very responsible act. Yeah. Running a business is not something, I mean, when look at what Reliance Industries has created. Mm. They impact, I mean, millions of lives. Yes, it's very important. I mean, forget about the customers. I'm talking mm. about the team that they have. Yes. So, uh, running a business is a very, very responsible act, and so, you have to take it a very. That's why I said you you can't run a business with only mind. Yes. You said that you satisfaction. Need, uh, that's very important. Uh -huh. And when you do it better, mm. you get a great sense of satisfaction. That okay, yes. I did this. Yes. yes. Always we do that when we. In the schooling school days or you know when we get a rank or we achieve certain things or we say like you no know, we stand in some sports first or so that satisfaction happiness gives yes. so similarly that when you start solve a problem and that problem is benefiting the society you get that satisfaction yes that's so what that's i focus a, on i mean okay. i never worry about finance hmm. because i have an elder brother who is taking care of it. <laughs> okay he he signs my check he gets me clothes he gets okay. me good food to eat he gets okay. me good. everything nice Okay. And uh, my focus always is solving challenges. Yeah. The rest, uh, I don't have to worry about anything else. So happy and nice to hear. The last question for you. Uh, this question is from a ninth grade student. He has an idea on automobile engineering. He is asking you know, how to start my startup. <laughs> so it's very, uh, you know, blind or blind, vague question which yeah. had been asked. But still, I want to put forward to yeah. listen from you. So interesting. I mean, if you have an idea in automobile engineering, mm -hmm. or let's say in any other sector, the rule is going to be the same as I've been just speaking. Yes. Okay. That, so it's, you should not start uh, with the thought that you want to start. Mm. I mean, you should start when you think is the right time to start. Mm. 
Are you getting me? So we both, when me and my brother started, we never really thought that we were going into business. Okay. Our focus was rather something else. We wanted to get into a great institute, do our PhDs and, you know, do all that. Hmm. But we landed up in a different case altogether. Hmm. It's because business was not the interest. The interest was solving a problem. Okay. That was a focus. And then rest everything, hmm. especially the money, it came around. Okay. With that. So I would tell, I mean, any student whosoever is thinking that, okay, I want to start. No, don't do it for the sake of starting it mm. or doing it. Do it for the sake that you think that, okay, I'm now ready enough mm. that I'll be able to do it. Okay. So when you think is that you're ready and you think you will be able to execute it in the best way and you get that confidence, right? I mean, yes. if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm getting out of my house, my health is fine. So mm. I have a confidence, okay, I'll reach office, I'll work hard. Yes. But if I have a severe headache, hmm. I'll not be confident to move out. Yes. Yes. So you need to, and that only I can tell, hmm. and your parents can tell. Correct. That when are you ready? Yes. And the moment you're ready, then shoot yourself to the market. And do okay. It. Okay. Fantastic. It was a good, uh, no learning from you. Also, it's uh, for sharing your experience. Uh, like you know, you started with uh, we should uh, solve the problem. We should be persistent, we should be hardworking, we should be committed, dedication 24 bar 7. These terminologies are, you know, uh, really inspiring and it will be uh, inspiring, I am sure it will be inspiring our students, uh, yes. uh, participants also. You know, few things which uh, we want to highlight uh, before we close the session, the way you come, said that we should be following our parents' instruction. They are the good mentors and, you know, you have been started, uh, everyone has, you know, buzz or following cricketers. We are all fan, you know, we have been more uh, towards our, you know, following or watching cricket matches. Yeah. He's a big fan, if you see, like, you know, there are, uh, now uh, T20 World Cups are going on. We can see when some important matches, no crowds are there in their road. So, when the uh, day and night matches, when it happens. Starting as an interest towards cricket to want to become a uh, sportsman, started your journey, you solved a problem, then the problem had, uh, no, you got a satisfaction from that, you followed your parents' guidelines and they were the good success uh, uh, story for you to go and uh, you said like, you know, every day, night you talk to your parents and uh, yeah. list out the activities, what you have done. So, all those things is a good uh, uh, learning, I am sure the participants, the students across the country who is watching this program would have been inspired, motivated. We want through this program at least few students to you know step into the startup initiative from all the you know uh, pinpoints you highlighted to become a successful entrepreneur. Yeah. So thank you for sparing your valuable time and uh, being with us today. Uh, it was really very much motivating and inspiring. I also learned so many things along with this uh, interaction. So we called you today is to make sure that. As an young entrepreneur at the age of 23, you have been able to reach at this height. So, congratulations Thank and you. all the best to grow for Thank better you. heights. Thank you so much. Thank you once again for joining with us. With this uh, note on behalf of Ministry of Education, Innovation Cell, uh, CBSE and the ICT, I sign off for, uh, from today's program. Myself, Dr. Ilangovan, Assistant Innovation Director, Ministry of Education, Innovation Cell. Stay tuned on Ministry of Education Innovation Cell YouTube channel to listen to future leadership talk program. Thank you. Mm -hmm.